When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat for the Lord's Supper. For in eating, every one taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat, to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, is my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we praise you. Thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing in our lives. We ask you, Lord, that you'd move mightily and bountifully today here at the rescue mission. Lord, I claim to not to know anything about what you want other than you just using me as a conduit. Holy Spirit of God, we just pray that you flow up and down the pews of this chapel, that you would have your every way with every heart. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. This is known as the communion uh, passage in remembering what had happened on the Last Supper. This is Memorial Day weekend in which we remember the men and women who served in our armed forces. Is there any men here that served in the armed forces? Step, raise a hand if you served in the armed forces. Hallelujah. Let's, let's give a hand. Amen. But in the same way, the men and women of this country served to give us freedom so it, it was with Jesus because of his death and his obedience to the cross gave us freedom freedom for the devil we volunteer in this country to serve in the armed forces back when I was 18 it wasn't so it was a draft but now it's volunteer but you know in the same way Jesus Christ himself voluntarily came in love to come to this earth to be able to die on the cross for your sins and mine. He voluntarily took that role. When you join the armed forces, you're having to obey your superior, whoever that may be. And Jesus Christ himself was obedient to the Father, the Bible says, all the way to death. He came not to do his own will, but the will of his Father. And so he did the same thing. But he bought us something we could never have bought on our own, and that is freedom. And for you men and women, for the men here today, and for the men and women that served in the armed forces, we would not have a free country if it was not for the fact that you sacrificed your lives in order to have that freedom. You put your body on the line that we may have what we have today. And so it was with Jesus Christ. He put his life on the line. He put himself in arm's way that we may have freedom in Christ, that we may have freedom from the devil, that we may be able to be partakers of this inheritance. But our, the word of God tells us today, it says in verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he break it, to speak it of the bread, it said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, it sounds like there's a contradictory of terms because he is telling us in here that this is my body, which is broken for you. But yet, when you turn to John chapter 19, that gives us an account of the crucifixion of Christ, we know that the body of Christ was never broken. And so it's may appear that there was a contradictory of terms. But in John 19.36, the Greek word for broken is serpatrome, which means 
to be wholly broken. Also, we read that the soldiers that came to break of his legs in verse 32 and 33, there was another word broken, another word which is kashigome, meaning to break down. However, the Greek word for broken in this passage for 1 Corinthians 11 and 24 is from the root word kleo, which means to break, and it means to be broken. And the Passover bread was a tremendous symbolic meaning for us today. The bread which Christ ate, and when he wanted his disciples to take part of, the unleavened bread that they took was a, a symbolism of Jesus' sinless life because he had no sin. Leaven is a measure of sin, and Jesus was sinless, so there was unleavened bread. But it also means this broken that Jesus had. It also symbolizes the foreshadowing of his pain and suffering. It would, that he would have to endure being beaten and pierced with a spear at the cross. As a symbol of his body being wounded, bruised, and broken through buffeting, scourging, plaiting of the crown, the thorn of crowns on his head, and the piercing of his hands and his feet with the nails. The broken bread also is an indication of the healing of the physical and sickness and injury. So the brokenness that Christ had in this particular passage was the brokenness for mankind. It was the brokenness of what he was going to go through on our account, how he would suffer much and how he would have to endure much because of our sin. And all that he went through, everything that I just mentioned and all of that brokenness were things that he went through, not because he had sin of his own, but because he decided before the very foundations of the world to put his life on the line as a sin debt for you and I, a payment to be paid to the Father in heaven for the sins of mankind that we could never pay. And yet here we are, Jesus had been broken, broken over the entire weight of sin. In the Garden of Gethsemane that just the night before, how he prayed and prayed and prayed if there was some other way and yet there wasn't. This uh, illustration of God, of the Lord's brokenness here in, uh, at the Last Supper also illustrated here in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, 24 is spoken of in Isaiah 53 and 4 and 5. Surely he was born our griefs, he carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Amen. With the work that Jesus did, there was a payment, a satisfactory payment for the sins of mankind. The Bible tells us that we need to remember this. When we have communion, we need to remember what Jesus had done for us. That we shouldn't forget. And I, I don't know about you, but with me, if I don't have something continually in front of me to remind me of things, a lot of times they, I, I, I drift away. I, I can't remember them. I've got way too many things that I'm trying to remember all at one time. And they, they lose their focus. And, and I don't want that to be for Christ. So they said that every time you go through the communion, remember what Christ had done at the cross. We have this Memorial Day weekend to remember what the men and women of this country did to serve and are serving right now, that we should remember those things. But yet many people decide to go camping. Many people decide to take off and do their own thing and forget all about the sacrifices of the people that served in the armed forces. And, and I'm not against none of that because I'll, I would do it myself. I'm just saying we can't forget. We can't forget about the sacrifices of the men and women of this country that they made that we're free. We can't forget that and Memorial Day needs to mean something to us other than another day off. But in a like manner, every day of our life should be a remembrance and a memorial to what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us about his body that was shed 
about his stripes by which we are healed. We also read in Matthew 8, 14 through 17, and when Jesus had come onto Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid sick with a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with the, his word and healed all that were sick. In a prophecy that was fulfilled in what I just read in Isaiah 53, it says this in verse 17 of, ver, of Matthew chapter 8, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Elias, the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bear our sickness. This is part of the brokenness of Christ. That he came to this earth, he suffered in many ways that we'll never understand. He saw the causes and the effects of sin. He saw what it did. And it broke his heart. And it broke who he was. As 100% God, yes, but 100% man. In every possible way, he was tempted like you and I. And he saw the effects of sin. He, he saw what, what evil has done to this world. And, and he saw the people with the palsies. He saw the people that had the devils in them. He saw the people that needed restoration. The people that needed healing. He saw all these things. And he was broken over all of these things that were happening and did happen because of the cause and effect of sin. And he was broken over the fact that he was going to be that payment of sin. That he was going to be the one that was going to pay for that payment. But it's, the Bible was very clear that he came and he paid that for us. But the Bible also tells us that after the same manner he took the cup. Now the cup was the full of the iniquity. It was the full of the time that he had to come to be able to pay. The cup was full of, of, of the injustice, was full of sin, and it was full. To show the Lord's death till he come. And the Bible says that this is the New Testament in my blood. Do this often, drink it, in remembrance of me. His blood also we should remember. Not only his broken body, not only the cup, but we should remember also his blood, which we sang about today. First Peter in 1.18 tells us, For as much as you were, know that you were not redeemed by the corruptible things of silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a, of a lamb without blemish and without spot. If you've been redeemed today, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the precious blood of Christ had come into your life. The precious cleansing of blood came into your life. The precious covering of his blood has come into your life. So when the, when the devil himself will accuse the Father and say, you know, Mike Herbert should not be in heaven right now, you should not let Mike Herbert in or any of my brothers here into heaven that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Look at all the things they've done in the past. Look at all the things they did as the wretched men they were. Look at all the things they did. And we would have to say, yes, we're guilty of those things. But hallelujah, when the Father looks down and he sees you and I who are in Christ, he sees the blood that covers us. He sees a reflection of his Son. And those things, those sins are no longer counted against you and I because all he sees is the justification that we've inherited because of what Jesus Christ has done in our life. Amen? Amen. So it's never going to be. You and I, as long as you live, as long as I live, we are never going to be righteous enough for Christ. We'll never be able to do enough righteous things, and never enough good things to merit the favor of God. It'll always be that when we get to heaven, 
And we stand before an almighty and holy God. And if you were to say, why should I let you into my heaven? It's never going to be because I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. It's never going to be those things. But I'm counting on the precious blood of Christ to cover me and to cleanse me. It's not what I had done, but it's what my Savior had done on Calvary. How he took that payment and that punishment for our sins. And that's what I'm banking on. Amen? Amen. And that is the same thing that you will say and I will say. Oh, righteous God, I'm not standing before you today cleansed of who I am because of anything. But my precious Savior, my precious Savior left the glories of heaven to come down to this earth to walk on this earth for 33 years and I'm resting in the finished work of Christ. He's got me in the palm of his hand. I got eternal life. Your eternal life and my eternal life started the day that we received him into our lives as Lord and Savior. It started that day. The precious blood has poured, poured upon you. The Holy Spirit resides within you to teach you the ways of God. And our home is not this place. As much as you may like today, as much as you may like the beautiful weather we got outside, I'm telling you, this is just my Kerbert theology, okay? This isn't in the Bible per se. I'm thinking that one minute in heaven is going to be better than any day that we're ever going to see on this earth, amen? amen. It's going to be better than anything that we'll ever see. Hebrews 9 and 12 says this, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, no longer that old system in which they sacrificed animals to be able to make an atonement or a, a payment for the sins of mankind. No longer those things, but by his own blood. By whose own blood? By Jesus' own blood. He entered once into the holy places, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Once and for all, he went to the cross once and for all, his blood was poured out. Once and for all, that was it. When Jesus, when the Old Testament, when the sins were there every year, a high priest had to go into the Holy of Holies, and he had to come and make an atonement for all of Israel. But now, Jesus Christ had come in this new dispensation, this new Testament times. Once and for all, he died on the cross. It was paid in full at that time. There'll never have to be another sacrifice. There'll never have to be another payment for sin. Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus took that on the cross. And it's because of him. And it's because of that one-time payment that took place all those years ago that you and I enjoy the freedom that we have today. Amen. Amen. And in verse 22 of Hebrews chapter 9 it says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Without the shedding of blood, from, if you read in the Levitical ways of, and laws, without the shedding of blood, there was no forgiveness. In the same way with Jesus Christ, unless there was a shedding of blood by, on the part of Christ, there would be no remission of sin. Well, there would be no forgiveness of sin unless his blood was shed. If you look at the Old Testament and the animal sacrifices, it was all foreshadowing of what Jesus was going to do in the future. It was all a foreshadowing of what Christ was going to ultimately do on the cross. And so the Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, and so his blood had to be shed. And his word, the word of God tells us today in 1 Corinthians 11, he says in verse 25, the cup of the New Testament is my blood. This you do often, drink of it, in remembrance of me. When we have the memorial set up, and when we have communion, never forget the precious blood of Christ. Never forget what that blood means and how it's been poured out for our sakes. There's no price to it. You couldn't buy it. You, no matter how much money you had in this whole world, even if you were, were all, if you took all the richest men in this whole world and you could stockpile all their billions and gazillions of dollars, 
Not one iota of their money, even if you put it all together, could buy even a drop of the precious blood of Christ. That come, that blood comes as a free gift. It comes to you and I as a free gift. And the question is, are you takers? Are you partakers of the cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you partakers of the free gift of salvation that comes from Jesus Christ? John 6 and 53 says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life you do. Unless you drink of that cup of that precious blood of God, and that precious life that's in the blood, unless you partake of who he is, you cannot have life. You will have physical life here, maybe 70, 80 years, maybe 90 if you're lucky. But spiritual life, spiritual life that will get you to heaven, spiritual life that will keep you in heaven, spiritual life that you need in order to have the forgiveness of sins to make it to heaven only comes from the life that's in the blood of Christ. Have you come to Jesus for the cleansing blood? Are you washed in the Are you washed in the blood of the lamb? And then in Colossians 1 and 13, and the word of God says, "And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiveness, have forgiven you all trespasses." blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Colossians 1 and 13 tells us that we were dead in our sins, that we had spiritually no life in us at all. But Jesus Christ had come, and that he had quickened together us with him and having forgiven us of all of our trespasses. Again, it was what Jesus Christ had done. When Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross, every sin that you and I committed was nailed to the cross with him. Everything was nailed to that cross. And Jesus gladly went. And we're reminded that it was for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame. But yet now, he's at the right hand of the Father. He's at the right hand of the Father. But when we get to heaven, when we get to see Christ for ourselves, when we'll have our crowns, which is another sermon, we'll cast them before his feet. Because we realize that everything that we did for the sake of Christ only became because he saved us, he gave us eternal life. He wrote our names in the last book of life. And he had gifted us in a way to be able to do the things that we're doing. And the work that we do here on earth for the sake of Christ is only an outpouring of the love that we have because of what he done for us. I'm not here today at the 445 because I'm trying to earn my way to heaven. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm here at the 445 today because the love that Christ had poured into my heart and the love that he's given me for you and for other people that I go to see. I just want to share the word of God. I just want to share his love with people that don't know him and pray that whatever I have in me and all that joy and that peace, that hope and that void and that filled heart that I had that was void, I want other people to have the same thing. But I'm not working my way to heaven. It's a joy to come down here to Rescue Mission. It's a joy to be able to share the word of God with you. There are some sacrifices that need to be made, yes. But nonetheless, it's a joy. And I'm thankful for a God that allows me to be able to come and a God that sees something within me that says I want you to be a part of their services. Amen. But guys, it's Memorial Day weekend. There are men and women in, in this country who sacrifice that we have freedom. And there are other countries where people don't know what freedom's about. They live in seclusion, they live in fear, and they live wondering when they're gonna have their freedom. 
and they may never have it. But gentlemen, we have freedom in this country. And the ultimate freedom that you and I can have is not to live in this country, although I love this country, but the ultimate freedom that you and I can have is to no longer be slaves to the devil, no longer be bound by his wicked and twisted works, but be freed from that by what Christ has done on the cross. Be freed from the shackles of the things that we've done in the past. Be freed from the things that keep us in darkness rather than come to the light. Be freed of those things and those ways that we used to have that kept us running around like a dog chasing its tail. The freedom that we could have to no longer have to worry about how am I going to fill this void that's in my heart. You may have filled it with everything in this whole world and what it may have to offer you, and at the end of the day, you still have a void in your heart. But Jesus Christ came to this earth. He died on the cross for your sins and mine. And when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your stripes, by his stripes, you are healed. Your sin debt has been forgiven. The Bible says your sins are cast away as far as east as west, never to return no more. There's no condemnation as I preached last week to those who are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Behold, all things become new to the new creation. All things become new. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You've got heaven. The void that you have in your heart, once that, once, that, once that name is written in the Lamb's book of life, there's no fear of death. There's no fear of death. The only thing you just know when you wake up every day like I do, I just realize I'm one day closer to glory. I'm just one day closer to seeing my God. I'm just one day closer to walking on streets of gold. I'm just one day closer to being with you brothers who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I look forward to that. But that freedom of this country, I don't even know the thousands and thousands of people that died in all the wars that we had in order to keep us free and still do. But I know this one thing. I know that there is a Lord Jesus Christ who came as the ultimate freedom giver and he wants to give life to all those that would receive him. And you gentlemen who don't know Christ can know him today. Your name can be forgiven. Your name can be written in the last book of life. Your sin debt can be forgiven. You don't have to walk out of this place going up to the meal wondering, am I going to spend eternity? Where am I going to spend it? You can know that you have eternal life, the Bible says. You can know those things. And they are offered to you as a free gift from Jesus. Is it a free gift for you? Yes. But it cost the Lord plenty. It cost him his life. The second person of the Trinity, before the very foundations of the world, had, that, had you in mind. And this was his plan. You today can walk out of here today and know the Lord Jesus Christ. Know him intimately. The Holy Spirit will come to live within you and will give you the way and the road and the light to your road to be able to light your path to what God ever has for you. I don't know what God has for you, but I have seen in the eight years that I've come here to the rescue mission, I've seen some of the people walk out of here that have graduated from the different programs and I still get to run into and still get to see once in a while. I see an incredible God who is able to do incredible things to people that are just you and me. And he still does. And he's still in the miracle business. And he is still in the business of transforming lives. 
this Memorial Day weekend could be an exciting weekend for you because it could be a day which you could look at from now until the day that you pass from this life to the next. And you could say, today I made a decision for Christ on Memorial Day. And every day that I go to church and I get to know the Lord more and I get to understand Him more and when we have communion, I won't fall into complacency. I won't, I won't conform to a dullness. But I'll go to church when we have communion with excitement because I know what Christ has done in my life. I know the things He has done. And I don't take for granted His body that was broken. I don't take for granted His blood that was shed. I don't take those things for granted. But I embrace them. And I look up to heaven and I say, glory to God, thank you for what you did on my part. Thank you that you came to this earth to give me freedom. And I thank every man and woman that has held a military office and have gone out for the sake, even in non, you know what? I don't even care if there was an act of war. If you were in the military and you served in the military, hey, you didn't know when you volunteered, when you were in the military, things could have happened at any time. You didn't know. You just, how life goes. All of a sudden, things here, things there. I mean, I, I, have, a, I have my oldest son, 31. He's in the Army Reserve. Three times now, he's almost been shipped out for chemical warfare. You don't know. But I applaud you for what you've done to serve our country. And I thank God, I thank God that we live in a free country. But gentlemen, let's pray right now and, and seek the Lord and say, Lord, I need the freedom that only you can provide. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We thank you, Lord, that we should remember the communion table and your sacrifice, the things you've done. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you came. We thank you, Lord God, that you gave of yourself freely. And we thank you, Lord God, for Calvary. Because if it was not for Calvary, all of us who know you as Lord and Savior would still be dead in our sins. We would have nothing if it was not for Calvary. But Lord, I know that there are men in this room that have never given their life to you. They've never accepted the free gift of salvation. And today they want to raise a hand and say, today I want to know Christ. Is there anyone that wants to raise a hand and say, today I want to know Jesus. I want him to be my Lord and Savior of my life. Is there any man that would want to? I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. It's a simple prayer from the depths of my, if your heart. If you mean it, confess it. Go to one of the uh, workers and tell them that you made it a commitment to Christ and you want to know more about this relationship. Lord Jesus, knowing that I'm a sinner and that you died for sinners, I confess to you, Lord, that I have done things my way. I confess to you, Lord God, that I did not know you. But today I heard the good news. I heard the good news of a Savior who came to this earth. I came to hear a Savior who died and took my place on the cross. And today I freely accept him into my life, into my heart. Holy Spirit of God, come to live within me. Change me from the inside out, that I may be the man of God that you call me to be. No longer wondering, no longer thinking, I could have did this, I could have done that. But knowing for sure in your heart that you're doing what God is now calling you to do. And I thank you, Lord, for saving my soul, writ my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And for the rest of you, I just pray, Lord, that you would help them. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would meet and exceed every need that is in this building right now. Lord, you know every man in this place. You know the ones who know you, you know the ones who don't, and you know every individual need. I pray, Holy Father, that you would work mightily and bountifully in every man's life here. If any man needs special prayer, come on up. I'll pray for you. I'm not, I love praying for you. <laughs>